Hello everyone, welcome to the event. Are you ready to accelerate climate action? And this is a general question. Are you ready to accelerate climate action? Perhaps you're someone who has always wanted to start activism or environmental research, but you've never really known how to get started. Or maybe you're already an established activist with a lot of experience, but would like to gain more knowledge and the skills in order to push your activism. Whatever is the case, don't worry, we got you covered here in Global Changemakers. My name is Megan Diaz. I am part of the Global Changemakers Network since 2017. And today I am very happy to be joined by an outstanding group of activists, environmental activists from Asia and Europe. So here joining me today is the Marie Claire Graf from Switzerland. We have also Mitzi Janel Tan from the Philippines and Rivalni Septeri from Indonesia. So I could talk for hours about what they have done because their activism has gone beyond borders. They have done wonderful things, but I would love them to start introducing themselves first. So actually the first question that I, that I wanted to ask uh, all of you is, can you please tell us more about yourself and what motivated you to get involved in environmental issues? Why is it that one day, you know, made you like get out of bed and say, I want to be an environmental activist? Hi everyone, my name is Rivali Sabdiadi. I'm from Indonesia, but currently I'm living in Australia, which is I work in agriculture and marine uh, project. So basically you can call me I, and then I have a lot of project in Indonesia because I love uh, environmental. That's why I'm studying in marine science and technology in Indonesia, but we have like a lot of project in Indonesia about environment and marine. So yeah. The reason, uh, the reason for me is like because I love my island, which is my island is from Lombok. If you've visit, uh, been in Lombok, it's really nice place to stay. But we have a lot of problem and a lot of issue of about environmental. That's why, that's the reason for me. That's why I work like we have we have like a lot of project about literacy and marine fisheries, something like that. Thank you, Rival. Only Mitzi. Yeah, for me, I'm Mitzi. I'm a convener and international spokesperson of Youth Advocates for Climate Action Philippines, or IACA, which is basically the fight for future of our country. Um, we started in 2019 and we have five points of unity, which are urgency of climate action, climate justice, youth-led collective action, defense of environmental defenders, and system change. We do different projects and different campaigns, and we also hold climate strikes along with the international community. Um, I started my hacktivism in 2017 and I was able to talk to and um, really immerse myself with indigenous peoples, but also small farmers and small fisher folk um, and workers and really understanding and realizing the social problems of the Philippines, which includes environmental problems, of course. And that was when I realized that I needed to be an environmental activist, I needed to be a climate activist because there's a lot of oppression and injustice that's happening across the world, especially in the Philippines. Since the Philippines is one of the most dangerous places in the world for environmental activists, it was really only a matter of time until we were, were all pushed to join the environmental group. Um, but as, as you're talking about your activism, we know that environmental activism can be very broad. There's many areas to focus on. We go like from mitigation to adaptation. There's some people who focus their activism on for example, forests, other they would focus on more like on oceans. So considering that it's actually very broad, I wanted to ask you, could you please delve into what are the specific issues that you have been taking up in your activism and what are for you your priorities for climate action as of today? Let's start with Rivalni, please. Actually, environmental problem is everywhere, right? But because I'm studying marine and fisheries, so I have like, we have some issues in Indonesia, which is like a lack of education and to know about marines, like ecosystem about that. And then the fact, it's like really, really um, sad fact about Indonesia. We just uh, doesn't know how to, you know, like uh, know more about uh, marine because a lot of Indonesia, we have like some issues about poverty. That's why we have like lack of education. That's why in my project, uh, which is we have like the give a game for environmental like marine education. So we teach children like uh, young people in Indonesia to know about 
how be or how uh, ecosystem in ocean like marine something like that that's why it's really important to know that like uh, education is really like the best tool for uh, people uh, especially young people to know more about marine and environmental issues right that's a, that's a very important angle and Mitzi, please tell us more about your focus on your environmental activism and i think marjanta said in the comments hello um i talk a lot about how climate justice uh, can only be achieved by bringing down colonialism and imperialism understanding that the climate crisis is a symptom of the profit oriented system that we have and a lot of it stems to you know peasants and farmers not having their own land um fisher folk not having their right indigenous people not having their rights and how the global north uh who, who are the colonizers who are the imperialist countries the richest most developed countries and the fossil fuel companies here, the multinational companies here, they are the ones who are historically the greatest uh, carbon emitters, and they also have the what they they also have the biggest responsibility to address the climate crisis and to pay reparations from the global north to the global south. Uh, so that's a little bit of of what I focus on, but it's it's a lot of it is about changing the narrative of what the climate crisis is and really talking about climate justice and how climate justice is about creating that world where no one is left behind. So make and actually. It's a fantastic intervention because it's exactly um, what I was going to ask next. Um, you have delved into climate justice, and my next question is actually, you know, when whatever whatever perspective, whatever focus we have on environmental activism, we need to consider the aspect of justice and inclusiveness. So I was just wondering, uh, hearing from experts like you, you know, like activists like you that have a lot of experience in this, what specific actions can be taken to ensure that the solutions proposed? are inclusive and just especially for developing for me because we i just mentioned about about uh, my uh, issues in indonesia actually about the marine so education is like really important for here when actually for indonesia that's why we uh we make the marine only is like game-based education about marine and it's really really good because uh, we start from like really really like a small island because we have for the fact we have like seven ten seven thousand seven thousand island in indonesia can you imagine that and it's really like huge population in indonesia but uh for the in education access in indonesia is really really low that's why uh me and my friends because we are uh, like uh, around indonesia because we have like a uh, really concern about marine so that's why we make marine only is like game based education to teach children how to maintain how how to uh you know like care about environmental especially like uh, marine biodiversity in our ocean yeah that's the answer of all. thank you very much well, uh marie claire yeah just to build on, on on your points i think it's very important to listen to people especially to the local people who are for example doing the work on adaptation or mitigation um, or implementing projects on ground and too often unfortunately um, someone has an idea in an office very far away and then tries to implement locally and then it doesn't match the expectations and um, worst case actually you can not only kind of status quo but actually be on the part of the local environment um, and also and also nature so I think like yeah maybe maybe you can talk about this as well maybe I've seen some projects because I, I know that there are a lot of them in the Philippines um, yeah, so I think like it's really important to listen to the local people, um, but also to kind of, I mentioned it already, like really work as a community, really work in networks and not having the ego approach, which kind of drove us into the crisis and just like, okay, I know it anyways, I have been doing it, let's continue it. And I unfortunately still see a lot of entities um, thinking they know it better, especially when it comes to young people and not really taking uh, people's considerations into account um, and kind of just cheat their, you know, very often their unfortunately both males club um and then driving these actions even on a local level but again like women have been excluded for so long and also um other genders have been excluded for too long and now the young people are still excluded or only taken into some advisory positions but not really taken serious and to me in like, you know when we talk about um equity and, and just implementation we really need to um see how we can write this as a status quo as a normal thing and not specifically have to invite young people because young people should be there anyways um and also i think one additional point we should also always think as nature and invite nature into the space um like this lady sounded a little bit abstract but actually many cultures have been where here is that you're taking nature into account 
they can water reverse glaciers um, at the forest into account where they took decisions. So a lot of indigenous cultures actually practice this for, for, for thousands and thousands of years. It's just very neat that people talk, unfortunately, about this. Thank you, Mary Claire. You mentioned a really important point, you know, young people should be there. And that's why we're doing these sort of events as well. Uh, Global Change Makers is a youth community. And Mitzi, please uh, go ahead and tell us more about your, your angle on this. I think what MC was saying about approaching things in the community level and listening to people is very important. Um, in the Philippines and across the world, I think, I hope, there are a lot of consultations by the government uh, before these conferences, although sometimes it's rushed. But a lot of times these consultations are only available or open to people who are already working on climate or already in the climate and environmental space. And that is also just a very limited um, sector of people. And as Marjata was just said in the chat in the comments, it's education that's really key to making sure that um, people are actually involved. So something that Yakup does, my organization, is that we go to communities and we learn from them, learn from the experiences they have, the way that they're already adapting without any formal or help or support from the government or from anyone, and then create uh, climate education modules contextualized to their experience. That way, when there are consultations, they know and they, they're more able to, to join these, these consultations in an empowering way that they can actually change and contribute to the discussion and they feel like they should go they see the, the the importance of it so a lot of it stems and starts with that kind of education both institutional life in schools but also empowering climate education that's contextualized that he experienced not just looking because of science but also listening to people aside from that there's a lot of other things such as you know Governments need to start having young negotiators, but these young negotiators also have to be trained. I know Yako has, uh, which is the UN body of, of youth, uh, has has initiatives all toward this, um, but it really has to go beyond, as Mary Claire was saying, just having a young person there to advise, but then there's no training, there's no support, there's no actual true, genuine um, engagement. And so that's something that needs to be changed. Yeah, and uh, once again, I think this connects very well to the next question I wanted to ask you all because I think from from all the answers, uh, common factor is that education is very important, and it is also um, a tool to empower, to empower young people and to empower others in order to participate in these decisions. So I wanted to ask you, um, have you uh, had any experience in environmental literacy or education for sustainable development? I know Rivali mentioned that she actually centers her activism on this, on this particular um, aspect, which is education for sustainable development. So I would like to hear more about your experiences. And in case you don't have a, a, like a lot of like experience on environmental literacy or education for sustainable development, is there any other point you would like to make on how climate and environmental literacy can accelerate climate action. So maybe let's go first with you, Rival Nisa. You mentioned you center your activism on, on this. So because uh, actually I'm like really, really in, into in, in, in for education, which is very an activist. And currently I'm living in Australia. I'm working in the agriculture sector and a lot of uh, agriculture and environmental, their role is so good. Which is really nice if Indonesian someday can, uh, you know, like uh, follow Australian, how Australian men's men's got agriculture, marriage, and fisheries. Because uh, it's like for environmental issues in Australia, it's really, really like uh, good, uh, good for example for Indonesia. I feel like uh, that's why uh, for the the tools, I feel like uh, Indonesian, like for the marine, for the game, like uh, the marinoli, and then I have like a lot of project indonesia which is now in my island i uh, i like to uh, have like a like a education for children and then about literacy because literacy is really important that's why uh, we we have like a national uh, government organization which is we call it lombok literacy so we teach children we ask children we uh, we uh, we invite children and young people in indonesia and lombok to read about uh you know like environmental about about our culture that's why it's really important to you know like ask for the the people the community to have like the negotiation for a uh, lombok uh, government because if not us who can be like that's why 
I really, I really like, I really love to join you guys to talk about environmental issue and environmental, how to give the solution for our environmental issue. Thank you very much, Melanie. Uh, Marika, would you like to add anything? Yeah, actually, I would like to highlight two initiatives I've been part of it, and it's also like really in the movement building, so everyone can also join. Um, so one is the Sustainability Week, and one is the Youth Negotiators, as Mitzi already mentioned about the importance of having young people in the negotiation. So the Sustainability Week is a movement led by, by students to really change the um, direction of universities and make them lighthouses of society, because universities are a place where innovation should happen. And um, too often, unfortunately, they try to maybe innovate on some um, kind of diesel driven engines, but they don't put a lot of research into actually how to teach, um, you know, more structurally things and also how to really have sustainable innovation, which is leading us into the future and also talking about social innovation and not only technological driven innovation and bringing the justice angle into it. So universities really have an absolutely fundamental and crucial um, or play a crucial role in it, yet often um, they are, at, at least from my perspective and from any student's perspective, not on the right way. And that's why we have been building kind of groups all over the world who have been organizing sustainability weeks, kind of a week to highlight what is already going on, but also putting very concrete demands to the universities um, to change the curricula, to you know change certain operational practices at the campus, um, but really also do more research in the right direction and bringing the, the lens of social justice and, um, and climate justice into the whole environmental um, area, which very often, unfortunately, is left out, especially at technical and more engineering universities, which I think is very wrong. Um, this has actually has been um, a really great success. And many universities really changed uh, from the demands of the students. Um, so there's a lot of educational um, elements in as well, uh, because unfortunately, many students don't get the um, right education on this in the universities, at least from my point of view, should have a course, a mandatory course for all students on um, environmental related matters, climate change, biodiversity and so on. And then the other thing, um, I think it's really important to not only give like a seat for young people somewhere, but then also give them the right training because I was a negotiator for Switzerland back in 2019 and it's really, really tricky and it's really daunting and it can really, be really scary. And if you anyway, already have imposter syndrome, it's just insane. Um, so we have to also really support young people in this journey, give them the right training, support them, give them with community, really see how they can also be unique because there is no, there is no added value if we just mimic the older negotiators, right? Because I mean, they have been trying to solve the issue for 30 years. And if we want to solve the issue, we have to solve it differently because there is no way we can just continue doing the business decision at upping, editing on what they need at least here in this call, but I also think the wider movement agrees. But then how are we different, right? How are we actually training ourselves to be different? And this is something um, you have others to get that we are doing in the Youth Negotiators Academy. This is an academy that is training young people from all over the world to actually be negotiators and young diplomats for these negotiations about climate, about biodiversity, about this dissertation and hopefully many others to really, um, you know, support young people on the journey to represent their countries in these international forums, because I do believe that we have to solve the global crisis with um, global cooperation, but the cooperation needs to change. And we need to have young people leading this on the forefront together with other generations, because I think every generation is something very valuable to bring to the table, but we need to diversify. We need to have even like, I personally, we even need to have like kids, you know, on the tables who are contributing. And because very often when we talk about youth engagement, we also talk about the little bit older young people like myself. Um, but I do think also something very valuable to listen to the kids in these for us as well. So yeah, I think there is a, a broad range of um, education and then sometimes it's very kind of more capacity building, very specific on something like the negotiations. And sometimes it's more broad and also changing the institutions behind delivering education, because ultimately we shouldn't fight for this, which is something which comes very naturally. Thank you so much. Very clear. That's a wonderful intervention. I'm also looking forward to hearing you, Mitzi. What would you like to share about it? This talking about it earlier, where our initiative in education is to be both pushing the Department of Education, the institutionalized side of education, but also working a lot with communities outside of that as well. Recognizing that the formal scientific education, if it is institutionalized, hopefully when it is institutionalized, it still won't be enough because it doesn't have that empowering option of the different, the, the variety of ways to become a climate activist, to empower yourself to be actually um, what we are expecting if climate education is institutionalized is to have more trainings in formal policy 
negotiation, which is great, but we also recognize that we need to attack the climate crisis from all sides, all aspects. So it is both policy, um, the funding policymakers, the funding negotiators, but also the collective action on the streets, also campaigns, also um, changing that public narrative, the social media aspect, the community aspect, so all, doing all of these together. And that's something that we're focusing on a lot with our members by really ensuring not just our members, but different young people across the Philippines and really everyone that we get to talk to understand is that young people are a powerful generation. But as Mary Claire mentioned, it is a multi-general, multi-generational fight as well. Um, it's not just this set of young people who has the fight for this. It's, it's young people in the future, but also young people in the past. Because if we think about it, every story the moment in it of society it was the generation of youth in that time leading the way alongside the most marginalized sectors i also like to really emphasize that it is with the leadership not just of young people but of the marginalized sectors that we are able to create change and so that's something that we focus on a lot that our young people learn from the frontline defenders and how they're campaigning how they're fighting what their campaigns are even if they're not climate campaigns and sorry let's say our fisher folk are fighting against reclamation project uh, and large scale fishing and our farmers are fighting for their land and going against monotop plantation. Our indigenous peoples are fighting to protect the forest and the Genfi mining for creation. But they're not climate. But if you look at all of them, they're all something that will help with climate justice. They're all about biodiversity. But if they're doing it because of their lives and their livelihood and their culture and not because of the environment, it's still all the same fight. And I think that's something that everyone should learn. That I definitely agree with it. I think uh, we have had some very interesting points. You actually also talked about social media and it was mentioned uh, in one of the comments I, I could read like in the Q&A uh, section. Um, they were saying that social media is essential to educate and that's actually true. You know, it's like there's the tools change with time. And also something that I really liked about uh, your interventions was the fact that we're talking about education for negotiations. You know, it's not easy, right? Like uh, probably one could assume that you just go there and that's it, but it's not. There's actually techniques, there's a strategies, there's like a set of behaviors that young people are not familiar with. So I think that point was brilliant. Thank you so much for bringing it, both of you, um, to this conversation. And actually, you know, so we're already talking about like um, the skills that we need. One of them is education. So we'd like to share that actually Global Changemakers has a free ecology for changemakers course. So like if for anybody who is watching us would like to you know, um, build on their activism skills and on their knowledge on climate change and environmental um, issues, you should definitely take this opportunity. And moving also on to other issues that are beyond education, I would like to ask you, what skills do you think are crucial for young people to accelerate their climate activism? Let's go with you, Rivalni. For me, it's like the management for sustainable and diplomas like fisheries, marine and agriculture, and also negotiation skills. It's really important because in like Indonesia, especially Asia, we have like a lot of kind of cult, uh, local people and then they have different kind of role. That's why it's really important to know like uh, the basic things to, to, uh, to come into the culture and then how to speak like uh, local. That's why it's really important to know like uh, the local people and then ask them to uh, to help us to to help us to talk to the the local people yeah thank you thank you so much uh marie claire what do you think it's a crucial skill that young people need yeah i also think that around negotiation is really important the skill like there's a whole skill set around negotiation right it's not just one skill because as a negotiator you have to listen very carefully and attentively and of read through the lines but also you need to be able to speed up at the right moment, really feel where is this window of opportunity and then kind of tailor the words to whoever you're speaking, but also be really decisive. Um, and I think there's so many skills around negotiations and I think very often young people have been told to kind of sit back, just listen, watch the elders, elders and kind of, you know, be, be patient and then it will, it will pull itself somehow. At the time when you can come in and I think this time just passed, honestly, if you have like another 1000 year to solve the crisis, well, maybe, yeah. But there is just no time. I mean, science, the latest IPCC report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the sixth assessment report, is showing us there's literally no time. I mean, the train really left the station. 
Um, so there is enough time for us to communication at the big part. Right? We have to actually jump into the driver's seat and also be part of these negotiations. And with negotiations, I don't only talk about the multilateral negotiations, which I am mainly part of, but also really talking at the local level, you know, when there is a negotiation with a farming community, um, there's also about negotiation. And I think the beauty about May I keep and all the people also here now in this call that our lobby or that what we defend is really nature is, is the livelihood of the people, is the science. And unfortunately, there's a lot of less interest in the space. Um, and other negotiators, you know, they negotiate on behalf of the oil lobbies. I mean, Mitzi, you, you mentioned, right, of the colonial structures um, of exploitation and, and so on. So I think the beauty about many, not all, but many young people is that actually we put the, the health of, of the earth and society and nature in the forefront. That's why it's so important to have young people included. But also what you mentioned, right? Um, it's like cultural differences when it comes to negotiations is really, really tricky. And I think it's also important to value these cultural differences while strengthening ourselves. And I do think it's very important that we as young people are supporting each other in these negotiation spaces. As mentioned, back in 2019, I was a negotiator for Switzerland. I got some training, I prepared myself, yet it was absolutely really, it was really, really intense. And I actually had my first mental breakdown after one of the negotiations because I just thought I failed um, miserably. Actually, I didn't, but this is how I felt. And there was no support structure for me. Um, and I think, or actually I know that many um, negotiators also are, are burned out because they want to defend something, but they are not reaching it. So I really think that the ones who are on the good side of the negotiations um, also need to support each other across regions, across um, countries and communities um, to see how we commonly can um, yeah, move forward because there are a lot of folks trying to hold us up and maybe meet to you. I also want to elaborate further on this, but um, yeah, we definitely need to really support each other. And I think this is also a skill we need. Thank you, my dear Mitzi. I think it's important for everyone watching and all anyone who gets to hear this that as young people we don't, don't need extra skills to become a climate activist. Whatever you already have, you can start. Um, of course, it's a learning process and depending on what uh, aspect of activism you want to focus on or you don't even have to choose right away. Like you can try a different one. Understand that you don't need to do everything. But if you want to try everything, go ahead uh, before choosing one. But as Mary Claire was mentioning, that was the set of skills needed for negotiation. But whatever you have, whatever you're already doing, that you enjoy talking to people, enjoy um, making art, enjoy your writing, enjoy, you know, whatever it is you already enjoy doing, that's perfect that you could already use for climate activists. Everyone can be a climate activist as early as now. All you need to do is to keep learning about climate science, um, about the the experiences of people on the front line and really understanding solidarity in that sense. Um, but aside from that, anyone can already start and you can hone your skills along the way based on the type of activism that you want to focus on and by surrounding yourself with a community that will also help you grow, support you as Marie Claire was mentioning, it's so important that you have that support system, especially in something as big as the climate crisis. The plant was very draining, it can be very difficult. But all of these um, things, they come together, we will grow together and that's how we change the system and that's how we change the world. It's amazing. De definitely, you know, like, I think that's what we're also trying to communicate here. If you if you are afraid of starting, um, you know, being an environmental activist, don't be like you don't have to. You don't need to have like a perfect skill set already developed. You're already young. You are you, and you can do it. And as Mitch just said, that's what you need to change the world, right? So, and I think that's also why we say like step up your activism, or like boost your activism, or accelerate your activism, because I mean you already can do a lot, a lot of things, and. Actually, this guides me to, to one of my next questions. Um, we know that Earth Day is approaching and we have uh, young people who, again, might not have started, you know, their activism. They don't know how to begin. Um, which are some actions that you would recommend for young people that they can take from home? Like maybe for some of them, negotiations are, are far away. Um, you know, there's many, many type of um, young activists. Um, some of them, like uh, like in your case, very clear. Like in your case, um, Mitzi, have had the opportunity to go like this international uh, and, and real need this international negotiation setting. But there's also grassroots activists, right? Like activists that they can just start 
from home. Maybe they can start even from their laptops, um, even from their cell phones. So I just want to ask you, how is it that people watching us can start today? How can they take action today? Let's start with you, everybody. Yeah, for me, is, uh, the easiest one is social media because social media is massive information, especially for young people because I, I think like a lot of young people use Instagram, TikTok, we can make video how to, you know, like uh, maybe inform about the uh, Marian's uh, issues and then how do we fix about uh, our Marian issues in our country, especially because uh, our concern is uh, our country first and then global, right? That's why social media is really important and then after that maybe if you already tell people about uh, your action in environmental you can ask your friend like in your community to you know like take action for you know maybe uh, one month for uh, cleaning the beach or cleaning the forest or something like that it's really really nice uh, to start to uh, to start our action for young people thank you Rivalni very clear yeah, kind of following up what Mitty has been mentioning, really follow your passion because there is not one way of being a climate activist or an activist or an advocate um, or a researcher. Right? Very often the media tries to kind of put this picture on how you should, but that's not the case. So I think, yeah, it really starts wherever your passion is. As Mitty mentioned, you know, that you're very good at art, then use this skill because I'm not good at it. And, and there are many others who are not good at it, but it's very unique that you can do something. If you love to do music, if you're a good researcher or a data analyst, and use these skills. And I do really believe that everyone can make a difference. And this can be at home, this can be at work, this can be at education, social, the bridge to mind. This can be in your local government. This can be with your parents, right? So maybe don't try to um, sign the impossible mission, but just start wherever you are um, and, and start right there and then kind of grow. And I think, I mean, at least most of the people I know, they started somewhere and then it was a journey and it, it leads somewhere and we need further, right? So don't try to um, kind of just see the end goal and okay, how do I get there? And then you feel imposter syndrome and overwhelmed that you're not getting there. But just start somewhere and every one of us had an aha moment and then a starting point and then it evolves from there. And so I would encourage you to find first what you're passionate about, your purpose, and then just start and it can be really daunting. So maybe find a, fr a friend who would like to start with you. So you're already two or maybe join a community. And in most of the places around the world, there's already at least the person who is interested or idea that there is a community and it can be easier to start it with a movement together and then maybe start your own project if you want or join something which is already existing or maybe connect to things which have been running independently. So there are many, many possibilities and really find whatever is um, yeah, most encouraging to you at this moment. Thank you, Mark. Next week. I think Mary Claire said most of what I was going to say, but basically, yeah. Just Start wherever you are, find a community to do things with, find friends. Um, there is a really good website called, I, ha I hope it's right, systems-change.net. And it, I, what I like about it is that it's different information about the climate crisis grouped into different um, categories. Like there's one about food, there's one about energy, there's one about marine. So you can, it's a good way to start your information process, like how to learn and educate yourself. Um, if you don't know where to start since the climate crisis is so big. Um, you, there is also a lot that you can do within your schools and within your universities. Um, especially something that, that's happening a lot in the U.S. is they're getting their universities to stop to divest from fossil fuels or to stop investing in fossil fuels. Um, I think that's a really good, impactful campaign that also feels very localized and feels very close to your heart and very doable because you are students of that university, of that school. Um, so it's starting at where you are, seeing the issues around you and seeing what you can change. Thank you so much. So we're just about to reach the end of this uh, Instagram live. And I would just like to end up um, asking you to answer the first question we, we said, you know, for those who are just joining now, and also because I would like to end up with like a very, you know, precise, almost if you can do like a one liner, it's very hard, I know, but how can young people accelerate the climate action and, and why is it important? So let's just like take these two questions as a final comment from all of you. And with this, we'll be finishing the Instagram live. So we will need uh, for our future, actually, because, uh, you know, if we not start starting from now on, so we don't have, uh, you know, like uh, our green future, our blue future, 
we're gonna have like a lot of pollution we have like a lot of problem especially from now on it's start uh, like in my country it's really you made a lot of pollution so if we are not starting from now on so yeah we don't have a really bright future for our climate or our global thank you very much all right maybe me hey, can we go with you and then we would end with Marie Claire hopefully joy in a community empower yourself with knowledge learn from science and from people and we need to all do all of this because the climate crisis is affecting everyone especially the most marginalized and we are building a better world together it's already started and we need you to join the efforts to create this better world very much yeah and unfortunately it seems like we have a connection issue with Marie Claire um but I know she's listening to us right now and her message has also been very empowering throughout the conversation. I want to take this time to thank uh, everyone, starting with you. Thank you, Mitzi. Thank you, Rivalni. Thank you, Marie Claire. And of course, thank you to all of the people in the audience who are here. Um, let's keep these words in mind. Um, you know, start your activism. You don't need to wait. You don't need to have like a, a specific standard. As our activists have already mentioned, you can start already from home. And also just highlighting it again, because it's actually very important and very useful for all of you. Uh, Global Changemaker has the Ecology for Changemakers course, which is free and it's online and it's available in Global Changemakers bio. So if you haven't checked it, please take a look. And again, thank you so much for joining. See you all. Thank you.